shop today on my old six half done here. Uh, you heard it, it's exhaust leak. I did fix the right side. I gotta get into the left side. There's probably some bolt, broken bolts. I'm gonna use the MIG welder if there is and pull them out. So stick with me and watch me fix my exhaust. All right, the first thing I'm gonna get after are these plug wires. I'm gonna just get them out of the road. I will be doing spark plugs to this truck. Uh, a customer job, obviously. If they weren't complaining about it or a misfire or something, I, I wouldn't be touching the plugs. But on my truck, I just, I don't know how good they are. I haven't pulled them out. I bought this thing a while ago and it, I don't know how the plugs are basically and I'm gonna just throw a new set in. Hey, just like that. I also leave the plugs in in case I do have to do some welding on it, like making out any broken bolts. I don't even know what it's leaking. Oh, back there. It's leaking back there. There's a bolt missing. Uh, if that bolt, is, there isn't enough to grab onto, then I, uh, I'll make it out. But I like leaving the plugs in that way. Nothing goes down into those plug holes and gets into your engine, obviously. So on this, like usually you gotta be kind of careful. Make sure you're not damaging the plug with that exhaust manifold dropping on it. But next step, we're gonna undo that steering shaft down there. We're gonna just get rid of that bolt. And you gotta be careful the undoing your steering. You don't really want your steering wheel to uh, freewheel. You can wreck the clock spring inside for the airbag, everything else. So the biggest thing, make sure you're, if you're undoing that and taking that steering shaft off, always lock your steering wheel. I got a steering wheel lock here that I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, this is my steering wheel holder. Uh, I do have an alignment machine here and I do have steering wheel holders, so I use this. Uh, it just will sit underneath the wheel and these will come up underneath and hold it. If you don't have one of these, uh, you can just wrap a bungee cord in there and hold your wheel straight. That way it's not gonna freewheel. You never want that steering wheel just to, you know, do a 360 at any time. So I'm gonna hook that up and then I'm gonna take that bolt out there, right there in that steering shaft. Oh, alrighty, that bolt there. I'm hoping this uh, snap on impact's gonna get her done. Oh, yeah. One thing you gotta be careful about too, I run into them where these things will, the tab will bend and then it freewheels and if your hand's in there, it uh, messes up your fingers pretty bad if this bends, if this bends over and it freewheels, it cuts your fingers, so be careful. So then uh, hopefully here, this just, well, that's a miracle because usually, if that obviously, it's the stars aligned. Usually they, these things are rusted together here in Canada and it's a mess. So what I usually do, this steering wheel shaft plunges. I sometimes put a vice grip down on the steering shaft and then I just hammer it up or use an air hammer to push it up. Sometimes they're so rusted together, it's insane. So the next step, I'm gonna get it up in the air and I'm going to start uh, pulling the tire off and the inner fender. kind of see it back there it's definitely been broken and leaking there's soot everywhere uh, we're gonna go underneath it and I'm gonna undo the three flange bolts first get rid of those and then I'm gonna come up here and get the rest of this this driver side is a little bit worse than the passenger side but I mean it's still definitely manageable these things are not bad to do and not bad to tackle alrighty I don't know. again it's kind of hard to see I like, kind of see them there's three bolts on this flange here one two and then one underneath there uh, you don't have to take out the O2 sensor. It can just sit like that and you're able to get it where it sits. I don't know if I can film this. It's kind of a roid of a spot. It's kind of hard to see up in there. But basically I use, uh, this is a 15 swivel to a 3 8 to a half inch ratchet and I just, I break them loose and then I'm gonna use the impact to pull them out. 
I just like to get them started with this setup, and then I, I'm gonna just use my impact after as soon as if you make that initial break, then the impact doesn't have to work so hard to pull it off. Okay, all three broke loose. I'm gonna go get the impact now. Okay, they're all broken loose. I'm gonna just grab my three eighths air. Snap on you. I can put a bit of lube or like penetrating, put some penetrating fluid on the stuff. You can also heat them with a inverter. And then that way it helps a lot too. So easy as that. Okay, gonna start on doing the bolts down here. It's kind of not that clear to see, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of wiring in the way, but uh, basically they're 13 mil. Uh, I just have a good snap on. You can break them from up top too. When I used to do, when I do head gaskets and stuff too, I, I don't necessarily take apart the inner fenders to do them, so. Maybe this will work. Can't really see it too good, but we're gonna give her on this straight on. Okay, this is the third one, I guess. Straight on. Oh, that one came out easy. It should come. That wasn't as tight as that last one. Jeez. There you go. and I usually don't break them that one I don't know why it was so tight it's crazy so now there is this broken one but we'll be dealing with that when we get the manifold off there's one in the back corner I'm gonna go up from up top I'm gonna bring like just go through the top and get it because it's too tight through here like where my flashlight is it's around the corner I can touch it kind of but I usually reach in there with a the ratchet I'm wondering if it's gonna break because that's where that you can see all that soot coming out of there. That's where my leak is, so we're gonna do it from the top. Hopefully it don't break. Okay, I'm gonna reach back down in there and put a 13 inch wrench and get that. Oh. oh, it broke right off. This is like, oh, maybe it's just, no, it broke. She broke. That's probably why it was ticking so bad. It was just in there, so it probably broke flush, which is gonna be a mess. Oh, whatever. We'll get her. All right, let's get this manifold out of there, hopefully. The driver's side is a little bit tougher than the passenger. The passenger is nice and old. There's nothing in the road. Okay. That one stud's sticking out. I think there's enough to grab it. I'm gonna try to remove it before, well, like extracting it. This one's sticking out the back when I'm gonna have to weld, but so you got your spiral extractor, a 3 8 extension, and then a, an air hammer 3 8 to air hammer, and the old snap on us, and we're gonna break that sucker free, watch that. There you go, 3 8 rache, and then we just dial it out. Come on now. That air hammer attachment is amazing. Got her out like butter. Alrighty, I just put a little tack on the end of that broken bolt like that, and then I'm gonna come in with a, a nut and go around that, and then weld that little piece to the nut and then try to turn it out some guys put a washer down first it's I don't know whatever you want to do I don't know if there's a 100% correct way everybody has their different ways of doing it this is just my rendition of this so I'm gonna roll a nut to that now and that's kind of what the end result will look like it might take a couple tries to get it but it it does work if not I got an arc welder too with I don't know, these crazy rods that we got. I don't, usually the MIG works fine for this. So you don't have to do nothing fancy. Usually that gets them out. So 
I'm gonna try to pull it out now. Okay, this is my this is my second attempt at welding it. My first one wasn't very good. I didn't have the gas on. I'm just holding this so for sure. It's a little bit tight, but it is coming off. I'm using the wrong size size of socket. Came out a bit, but it broke, so I'm gonna have to redo it again. Alrighty, the end result is this. So I think this was four tries. The third one was just miserable. It uh, I, it wasn't welding good, and I knew something was up, and it just broke off. But this one hang, hung on, pulled it out. So now I'm gonna clean up my side of my block, razor blade it, shine it up. I'm also gonna clean up that manifold, make sure it's not too warped, and then I'm gonna put her all in. I'm gonna spare the boredom of cleaning and just go straight to the install that's what you guys will see but i'll have to clean her all up okay i got everything cleaned up manifold sitting in there so this is the bottom gasket this goes from the bottom of your collector to your y pipe this is the one that works for my truck i mean whoop. <laughs> i also get a whole new bolt kit i don't uh, throw the old bolts back in there that's part number for there napa of course you can't get a whole new manifold this one's kind of rusty and I mean, it works. It's not too warped, so I'm going to leave it in there. If you opt out, you can get different manifolds or headers. This is just the way I'm going to do it. Save a couple bucks. And this is the gasket I use. Just a Felpro. I did the other side with it. It works really well. Uh, one trick is to uh, you just put the end bolts in your manifolds. Or, like, you put the manifold up to the head and put the end bolts in, and then that way you can just slip this gasket over those holes. And that way you don't have to worry about the gasket dropping in and out it's a great system so this is me installing the manifold now also on this gasket this get might be hard to see that says manifold side and this will say down so you just got to set it in there like that so the manifold's in there and then i can just slip this in behind the manifold and hook it around then run your bolts in and torque it all up everything all the bolts hardware in there it's gonna be a real bugger to see but uh, you 11 foot pounds first, then 18, start in the center and work your way out. And these Napa bolts, for whatever reason, they're uh, they're 12 mil heads instead of 13. I know when I worked at GM, they, they came 13 mil again, but for whatever reason, the Napa hardware now is 12 mil. So make sure you got a decent 12 mil socket. I got a snap on chrome flexi then you just work your way around the whole thing this back one is really interesting that's where this fancy socket kind of comes into play but we can't even can't even see it but it's up there there's that one and then, and then, and then we're gonna just go back through and do the final torque of 18 foot pounds. I'm gonna turn my light here, maybe. You see it? Yeah. It's a fancy snap on flexi head. It lets you get it anywhere. So we're just gonna do the final one with. Can uh, I get in there better? Probably not. It's, it's not easy to shoot. Okay, kind of like that. Get the idea. It's torquing bolts. Easy to see in real life, not on the camera. 18. 18. Oop. This crazy one back here. There, I'm on it. One left. Okay, done deal. Now we go underneath and snug them up from the bottom. Alrighty, again, it's kind of hard to see, but I went ahead and did it. Just snug them up evenly. They're 37 foot pounds, that's my only advice. And yeah, they should all look roughly the same length sticking out. And then you're done with that all. And then you can go back up top. If you're doing spark plugs like me, 
good time to do them now you can get in there the steering shaft is out of the way so i can reach in there but you also might want to just lift up on the steering shaft here come on now <laughs> don't let it get jammed but this is a good time to slip it together too down here before you bolt it together but i'm gonna go ahead and throw new plugs in this bad boy while i'm down here and have the inner fender out I'm gonna put that steering shaft bolt in i do put a little bit of a loctite on it just to help out with that make sure she don't come off ever I also put a little bit of anti-seize on the steering shaft. That way it's all good. Okay. Then I just hit her with the air impact. All good. Good to go. Next is spark plugs, or spark plug wires, I should say. Let's get those done. Put on there, they're not hard though, they're easy. There's that one. That one. That one. I also undid the booster here. When I was pulling out that back bolt, make sure that goes in. And then this one, last one, number one, cylinder number one. And then I gotta clip this back over too. That's the done deal over. Now for the moment of truth. How's it gonna sound? No more exhaust leak at least. Sounds good. Thank goodness. It's all coming out of the back now. Perfect. Thanks for checking out my video on how I repaired my exhaust leak. If you got any comments, uh, questions, leave them down below. And always remember to like and subscribe my videos uh, to stay up to date on what I'm fixing. See you later.